explained in a talk yesterday as well. Um, imagine there are two boats in a lake. And one is the Republican Party boat, and one is the Democratic Party boat. And I think we'd all agree there's holes in both of those boats in terms of their policies, in terms of what we want. And I, I will grant you that there are more holes in the Republican Party vote, not many, but there are more holes in the, De in the Republican Party vote than in the Democratic Party vote. I'll grant you that. But hey, stay in either one of those boats much longer and we will drown. We will drown. And frankly, sisters and brothers, I'd rather take my chances, jump overboard, get out of either one of those damn boats, swim for the other shore, take my chances drowning, rather than stay in a boat that I know I'm going to drown in anyway. Whoa. All right. Um, let me try to put it a different way. There's a difference between saying that one party will bring about a slower death, slower global warming, slower erosion of our democracy, a slower growth in the U.S. empire, slower growth in the number of wars we're waging, a slower growth in the number of unemployed, the number of homeless. That may be true, but it's a downward trend, a downward slide into abyss. We can't go much further before we are into barbarism. How much more can we take? How much more can we allow our own government to do, not only to ourselves, but to the people of this world, as they do every day? It's indecent. It's indecent. And the campaign laws are indecent as well. All right. I, I want to end on this note. I do not despair at all in this regard. Now, I, I said this, I think, one night at one of the Occupy meetings. I'm 73 years old. I've seen a lot of good movements come and a lot of good movements grow. We've, made, we've won great victories in this country. We don't teach them in our textbooks to our children, but we better damn sure remember how we won those victories. And we didn't elect ourselves out of the pickles we've been in. How the hell did we end the war in Vietnam? It ended under Presidents Nixon and Ford, Republicans, and they weren't men of peace. But it ended then, not only because of the battlefield victories of the Vietnamese, because by that time, an anti-war movement in this country had marched in the streets so long, had gotten so strong, was so broad, had so many uh, Congress within the military itself, that no damn president of either party, or any Congress of either party, could continue the war. That's how we stopped the wars. Sure, they finally voted the way we wanted to, but not because we voted for them. What about the women's movement? Do you think those nine men on the Supreme Court simply woke up one morning and said, Jesus, what a schmucks we've been. All these years we've been wrong. Of course women have a right to choose what to go with their own bodies. No. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of women and their supporters marched for years and got arrested and got jailed and were beat up in order to make it impossible for that day of Supreme Court, if there was going to be peace in the land, to do anything but bring justice to the women of America. That was true of the labor movement. That was true of the civil rights movement. And it will be true of our movement, or our movement will not succeed. History is on our side. We've proven before we can do it. So my friends, if we have the will to do it, if we don't get sucked into that stupid electoral political game, if we understand that the politicians are not our saviors and that we have to save ourselves, if we remember the victories that we the people have won and continue to win, then we know one thing for sure. History itself is on our side and our great day will come. Thank you.